Every woman deserves to feel vibrant, safe, loved, and feel her power. The Woman's Vibrancy Code podcast is here for a potent use of your time. We will cover energy, hormones, and libido with episodes that also dive into entrepreneurship, money mindset, feminine power, and much, much more. Introducing Mariah Brown, Yale and functional medicine trained women's health expert, midwife, mom, and entrepreneur. All right. Welcome back to the Women's Vibrancy Code podcast. This is the second part with Petya Kolibova. And interestingly enough, if you listen to the first interview with her, she and I were sharing our stories around miscarriage and she was a kind of at the beginning of the midst of her journey. And then we recorded a second interview that same day around human design and the work that she does out in the world. And ironically, something got messed up. We don't exactly know, but that interview got deleted. It's disappeared. Nobody knows where it is. So Petia had gifted me a human design session. And so what I decided is I just trust that it's always divine and things happen for a reason. And so instead, I am going to share publicly what that human design session was. And hopefully you can listen in and learn a little bit about human design, get a feel for Petia's work, and also learn a little bit more about me in the interim. Um, and fascinatingly enough, I do mention in the this interview you're about to listen to that after the first one where we were going, I was talking about the miscarriage, I did offer myself up and she did end up calling me and invited me to um, have the opportunity to midwife her through her miscarriage, even though it was virtual on the phone, um, it was spectacular. And since then we've continued to build in our relationship and it's spectacular and lovely. And I have big love and respect. So Petia, if you're listening to this big love for you. Okay. For those of you listening, let me read her bio. So Petia Kolibova is an alignment women's coach who guides women to intuitively connect with their inner vision so they can experience personal and professional magnetism and become unapologetically abundant. Her mission is to empower visionaries who are on the path to embody their fullest self-expression, to soulfully expand into a quantum leap in all dimensions of their lives. Petya gives immense clarity, exact steps to unlock women's divine feminine and abundant mindset through subconscious work as a certified breathwork facilitator, Reiki, NLP, and human design practitioner. She leads her six and seven figure clients to their next level in life and business. If she's not interviewing fellow experts on her podcast, Unapologetically Abundant, which I have been interviewed on. So definitely check out Unapologetically Abundant podcast. And um, if you want to listen to the time when she interviewed me, you're welcome to, especially if you're in this space and you're a podcast listener, listener. So if she's not interviewing people for the podcast, she's traveling the world with her husband, hosting retreats or reading. You will find her in nature, disconnecting from the world connecting even deeper to herself. So listen in, this is a little snapshot into the work that she does, kind of a, a mixture of a personal human design reading that she did for me as a projector. And I got to learn more about that, but she does talk a bit about the other um, human design types. And I'll put all of her contact information in the show notes, of course. So definitely reach out to her if you're leaning in and longing for more. And with that, here we go. It's so fascinating, you know, human design, like whether you ever heard about it, and I know we talk about it before, but whether you like heard about it or not, like, I feel like when I do these readings, women feel like coming home. Mm -hmm. There is these like truths that they already knew, but it's just this deep reminder, like, oh, okay, this is me. This is how I see the world. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
And uh, very often there is so much conditioning from our environment and our world of how we should be behaving or what does it look like to be a good mother, good lover, good wife, good friend, good, you know, boss or, or, you know, entrepreneur. And there is what I love about human design. It's really art of differentiation. Like each and every single one of us has very completely like unique blueprint who we came here to be. And it's, always growing, always unfolding. I'm studying human design almost four years now. And I feel like complete beginner, you know, and 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 I'm a type of person who like dives deep. You know, I had mentors and courses and and books. And uh, I feel like it's a it's a beautiful reminder to reconnect to your body. Because we are so often in our minds that we disconnect. And, and I said it before we start recording, when something happens, we dissociate from our mm-hmm. bodies, whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, in the past trauma or whether it's like life gets busy, we disassociate. And human design always reminds us, come back to your body, start trusting your instincts, your intuition. Where is this guiding you? And you know, for those who have no idea about human design, I mean, you can always go and ask Uncle Google. I'm like, that's like a quick fix, right? <laughs> for most of our things in nowadays age. But um, human design, it's a beautiful, I feel like art because it blends the the ancient wisdom of astrology and I Ching and Kabbalah and uh, Vedics, you know, um, energy points, but also it brings in a quantum physics. So it's not just like a woo woo things. There is a quantum physics that are happening there too, and it really blends the spiritual and strategic together, mm-hmm. and um, it's very life giving. It's very life giving to see who you came here to be because there are five different designs and there is a manifester manifesting generator generator projector which is you mariah and then reflector so the most of the population is manifesting generator and generator those two are very similar but manifesting generator it's like a baby of manifester and a generator because it kind of has a little bit of both and um, that is around 70 percent of our population and wow. then yeah so the you know the generator and manifesting generators are really the people that um, have this sacral energy meaning they have the energy of life they can create their own energy and it's it's like they have an engine inside of them so you can feel when you're around generator hello here petia generator <laughs> my spiritual wife she's also projector one three as you and she's like oh when i'm around you i can go and go and go and go and go and then she'll crush you know <laughs> she's alone but you as a projector you can receive the energy of others sometimes you can have like spurs of energy that it's more than generator because but it's a short period of time mm-hmm. we have sustainable life force energy so projectors are a little bit over 20 percent of the population and then we have manifester who it's only around eight nine percent of the population and then the most rare it's a reflector because that's only one percent of our population wow so, and it's so ironic because it's based on the location and time of birth. Yes. Yeah, so it's the date, the time and the place of birth, you know. So um, like I said, like you can go on Google and type in a free chart. I like using Jovian chart. That's the one that I used when we first start talking about it, because it will tell you like when when you look at human design, it can be really like overwhelming because it, it's like a foreign language, right? You look at it and, and, and it's like if you're trying to like read physics, you look at it and it makes no sense, right? At first, because when you get your chart, it's it looks like a, a body graph with different centers, different lines, you know, different 64 numbers because there are gates and channels and centers, and it can be overwhelming. And I always say the, the most important thing really is for you to know 
what is your like type? What is your design? Those five that I just mentioned. And then what is your, um, what is your authority? You know, like what is your, what is your, where is your authority coming from? Because we have all like different authorities and learning your strategy. So each type has a different strategy and the strategy is um, how to make things happen you know, in your life. So for example, for generator and manifesting generator, it's to respond. So we are here to respond to things. So we are here to say yes and no. If you want to know something about me, if you want to honor me and make my life easier, you don't ask me open-ended questions. You ask me yes and no questions. So for example, if my husband comes home and says, honey, what do you want to do tonight? I'm like, I don't know. Right. But if he say, Hey, babe, do you want to like stay home and watch a movie? I'm like, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. You know, it's, it's like going back to the primal. uh uh Uh-huh. As a little kid, sometimes we get like punished, like, Hey, speak full sentences, like express yourself fully. Right. Like speak right. But it's like allowing ourselves to go back into that primal, natural. uh uh Uh-huh. So if he asks me, Hey, do you want to have a pizza tonight? I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. You know, it's like, no, I don't. Right. Do you want to go out? Uh uh-uh. Do you want to stay home? Uh huh. So it's, it's, it's really like honoring the design. It's like when you understand yourself and others, it's others can feel really seen and really understood. And I know there is a lot of personality tests like Enneagram. Try it a couple of times. It doesn't it doesn't resonate with me personally, just because like I change my answer every time, depending on how am I feeling, <laughs> how did I sleep? I'm trying to be smart ass because I'm like, oh, if I say this, then I will get this result. Like this makes sense, right? So with human design, you cannot like change it or fake it, right? Yeah. You just get it's like to- a horoscope. <laughs> I'm a Gemini and I don't know a whole lot about the zodiac astrology, but when I learn about a Gemini, I'm like, oh my God, that's totally me. My husband, so, my spiritual wife are one, three profile like you. We will get to it later, but they're also Geminis. Wow. I'm curious why I keep attracting all the Geminis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it sounds like there's the type, which is yeah. your human design and yes. then your authority and your strategy. Yes. So let's, let's finish with the strategy and then we get to the authority. So okay. your design, your strategy, and then your authority. If okay. you know these three things and you know, it, it doesn't have to be like, you know, in like first days, later days, like yeah. first you get to know your design, but the strategy, like I was mentioning for uh, manifesting generator and generator, it's to respond. We are here to respond to life. We are here to respond to the things that light us up. And then we are magnetic. Then when we say yes to the things that really light us up, we're magnetic and we are giving energy to others around us. Then projector as yourself, Mariah, projectors get to be invited, not to initiate things, not to respond to the things, but to be invited, recognized and invited. Like your, your strategy is to be invited, but you really have to be recognized. You get to be um, working with people who value, recognize you. And yeah, it would be nice for all of us to be recognized, right? But for you, it's, it's, it's like an it's like air, you know? For you, when you are recognized, When you are celebrated, you come to life, you're blooming, Mm -hmm. you are feeling like, yeah, my life has a purpose. And then to bigger things, you get to be invited, you know, no initiation, no, like, let me go and start this and do this, you know, because so ironic though, because yes, um, I feel like my inner child dances when I'm invited to things or when I feel um, recognized. And it often feels like it rarely happens. And most of my life, I've been in scenarios where I'm always the one initiating the thing. I feel like I'm always the one inviting. I'm the leader in business. I'm the one that throws the parties. I'm the one that invites people over. And, and then, so then when I first heard projector, I went, really, I don't know if that fits, but then I go, well, huh, 
have I just been existing in misalignment? Mm -hmm. Because when I am invited to something or if I'm not invited to something, I feel crushed. Like it is one of my biggest inner child, like painful patterns is um, moments of feeling not included or not invited. It's, it is like, it hurts my heart. I had a moment this morning with my son dropping him off at school at the first time and seeing the pattern kind of interplay with him and, and a couple of his best friends and my inner child stuff came out and it just like, I wanted to cry. It's, it's, it hurts me so mm-hmm. deep. Mm -hmm. Because that's natural for you, Mariah, you know, we learn to exist in the world based on the expectations and conditioning we are seeing around us. Also, who are your parents? Who is your husband? Who are your kids? Like you are going to be influenced by the people around you, you know, like, for example, like uh, my husband, you know, Christopher, he's a manifesting generator. So I get influenced by his energy of his. Um, so his authority is uh, emotional. And again, we'll get to it a little bit later, you know, but I can feel his waves, his waves when he's up in the world and he's loving it. And then he's down and he doesn't want to be adulting. And it feels almost like a depression, you know, I feel that I'm influenced by that. I'm influenced by his energy of doing 20 things at the same time. I I'm around him and I try to multitask and everything is falling from my hands. I'm not meant to be multitasking for him. It comes easily and naturally. So of course you can initiate, I can initiate, but it's not going to be the same result as when manifesto initiates because they're born to be initiating. <laughs> when you're invited, you will be in the right places with the right people, with the right opportunities, and it will feel easy. It will feel natural. It will feel like, wow, this was meant to be. And you will feel more like fulfilled in life. It's amazing. I can think of so few times in my life that I've felt invited. Because have you waited? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe not. You know, that's that's the funny part. Like as a projector, you're meant to like be invited. So you're waiting for the invitation. And in the meantime, you're doing things that, you know, um, bring you joy. You are studying or learning because your profile one, three, we'll get to it a little bit later too. It's like, you want to be like, you want to have the foundation, you want to understand, you want to research. It's the investigator. It's the one who wants to feel safe, you know? So you- Totally. I can totally relate to that. Yeah. I mean, come on. I I went to Yale for my master's. Ah, so like, it's not just becoming a midwife. I have to go to the best school in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's like your, that's your nature, you know, that's Mm -hmm. your nature. So your nature, it's being projector, being invited, being recognized, you know, also not having like sustainable energy of like, go, 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 go. Because if you don't rest, if you don't give yourself that space to recharge, you're going to be bitter. You know, that's why you know that you're not aligned as a projector, you're bitter. You know, if, if you're not aligned, there is a sense of bitterness, um, yeah. I am really lucky that, um, I just think about my days in our household. I'm so lucky that my husband is home and he does the mornings with the kids. So my mornings, like if I had it all my way, I wouldn't start until 10, 11, even 12 o'clock in the day I because I rest and I recharge yes. and I, I don't like to exercise in the morning. I don't like to interact with people. Like that's my time to create and be still and meditate and do my sauna. And, you know, if I have it all my way and then I can go, but I think the other pieces, when I think about rest and go, I also tell me if this is true. I think about extra extroverted times and introverted times. Mm -hmm. So I, especially as I've gotten older I can, I'm both. So Mm -hmm. I can exist and really shine in an extroverted around people serving. But if I, I, I I require time to be back in an introverted space and to kind of go into my cave and, and renew my own stores Mm -hmm. of energy. And so I see that as, so is, 
are these waves of extrovert and introvert, is that the same as go and rest in your world? Uh, you mean in human design? No, that wouldn't be like the, the same thing. It's just for projectors. They just get to have a little bit more rest, you know, like a little bit more like time for themselves and also be like outside of people's hours because you can feel people's energy because projector yeah. is the guide. Like you can feel and see people's energy. You're the one who is meant to tell other people what to do. What happens is you have to be invited to tell them what to do, because the thing is that for you, it can be a little bit challenging. Like, let's say, for example, I want to get pregnant. Right. And I am drinking bottle of wine every day and I'm smoking cigarettes and I am, uh, I don't know, like doing x-rays every weekend just for fun, right? Because I'm painting bones, whatever. And you look at me and you're like, Petty, are you crazy? You cannot be drinking alcohol every day. You cannot be smoking. Like if you want to like have a healthy baby and I'm like, who do you think you are? Because mm -hmm. I didn't come to you and recognize you and you can see it clearly and I'm giving you complete extremes, right? Like there are yeah. things we don't know that we don't know, right? Like there are things that we wouldn't know and you're like, hey, Petty, I like, you know, it's better not to do this type of exercise or it's better not to travel over a weekend. Like, oh, I didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I don't ask you, if I don't invite you like, hey, Mariah, like I would love to know, like, what is the best way to, to get pregnant? Or, you know, like then you are invited, then you are recognized, then you are like, you know, I'm seeing you, I'm recognizing you. And then I will be able to receive your advice. Mm -hmm. If you go and just tell people what to do most likely it's not going to land that deeply. So even when you're working with your clients, they recognize you because they're paying you. They want to be in your presence. They're valuing your expertise. Mm -hmm. if, if you would go on the street and you see a pregnant lady there, you know, drinking from a bottle of wine and smoking cigarettes and you tell her something, well, most likely it won't land. Yeah, no, I, I relate to this a lot because I do feel, and my intuition is strong and I often have, um, like I, I can consider them intuitive hits. Some people would say like, do you have psychic tendencies? But I just, I, I have a knowing and I feel it in my body, but then often I'll just be passing someone on the street or it'll be a friend. And, and I, I won't, I won't say anything unless there's an invitation. Yes. So are you suggesting that someone who's a different human design, such as a generator that they could potentially just tell someone how it is and they would be received differently as well. Like for me to be received it, the, because my human design is projector, it, it's almost that much more important that I have to be invited in order yes. for what, whatever gift I have to offer to be okay. Fascinating. Yes. Each design is different. So for example, for me, I'm not meant to initiate and come to someone and tell them what to do. I'm meant to be responding you know, so for me, it's like responding, but with projectors, it's like with people with me, I can respond to my environment. I can, you know, so it's a little bit different, but for example, for manifestors, so for manifestors, their strategy, it's to inform, they're initiating things. They are the ones who can just go and, and tell us it is, it doesn't mean that they're going to be like, you know, like, like received like wholeheartedly because nobody wants to be told what to do. However, a manifester, it's the only design who is here to just inform. So manifester, you're not meant to be asking them questions. You're meant to inform them. Hmm. They're not meant to, because they don't like to be told what to do. They are, they're very unique because they have, they're very fast like projectors are more like can be, you know, it's not like you're slow, but comparing to manifestor or manifesting generator, you take your time because you are like observing around, you're looking mm -hmm. at the energy, you're feeling into the energy manifestor just goes, they don't look back. So they get to learn to inform those around that will be impacted by their decision. It's not like I, I got to like tell the stranger, you know, on the street, like, hey, I, I just, you know, I'm moving out from home or I'm, you know, moving houses. It doesn't matter. Only informing the people that will be impacted by their decision. But with you, when you learn to be invited, everything like will be having a different dimension and depth. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be like so much better. Yeah. I mean, I even think about a collaboration. Like, yeah. okay, I'm I'm planning these retreats, right? And they're spectacular. But when I get quiet, I love doing them. But then if I get quiet and I think about who, if, when I allow myself to dream of individuals that would invite me to co-facilitate their retreat, oh my gosh, that just feels so soothing. And yet I still have the tendency that I like to be in charge, which does not seem like what I'm hearing so is the projector. Projector, it's a guide. So it's not like, uh, let me go and let me do it all and, and just like run with it. You know, manifestors are like a fast train just running by themselves. Projector is the one who is guiding. Projector is the one who is like consultant or, or guide or, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. Most the midwife. it's the midwife because I'm just... My job is to simply hold the container. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like trust that all the pieces are moving and they're divine and they're happening for a reason. Yes. You see? Yeah. That, you are in that, a perfect position. You know, you are doing what you are meant to like, you know, be mm-hmm. doing. And um, it's just allowing yourself to be invited because mm-hmm. again, it, it's going to be so much richer for you, you know, being invited for the podcast, being invited for the conversation. I invited you to have this conversation, mm-hmm. you know, because I value, I respect you. And I'm like, I would love to do this with you, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, and when you were talking about your intuition, like looking at your authority, you do have instinctive intuition. So your intuition, it's in your spleen. It's in the moment. And it's, it's, it's like, um, gentle whispering and it seems to me that you learn to listen to that Mm -hmm. yeah so you have a very strong intuition and you are very um like purposeful because your identity center is defined meaning you're not looking outside of yourself for love and direction people when they're around you they feel like you give them the direction you give Mm -hmm. them the love you know yeah And, um, that's fascinating because it's so it's, I mean, it's so spot on. And I've always thought it must be because of my childhood, because I grew up, you know, my parents divorced before I was born and my father's been married four times and my mother's been married three. So there was a lot of change constantly going on around me and there was love, but there was also a good amount of instability and, and the adults just trying to figure it out on their own. And so I have memories as early as age four, where I just, the impression that I got was if it's going to get done, I do it on my own. Yeah. Like there's not really going to be someone that's going to be there to do it for me. Mm-hmm. And I always made the assumption that like that my resiliency has come in, like I'm very self-reliant. Yeah. And it, it, it it's like, you've been designed this way. So it's not because of your childhood Hmm. is who you are. You were already designed this way. Like when you came to this world, you already had the sense of purpose and directionality, you know, even before age four, like, you know, when you were born, the moment you were born, you already had the sense of directionality and you also have a defined throat, which means that like you are speaking, you know, like um, you have a very strong voice that um, is very like um, a certain way, you know, for example, for me, I have an open throat. So that means that like, I can be changing the way I am speaking and, and it's easier for me to like learn languages. And, you know, it's, it's just changing this, it's openness for you. There is, um, a certain way of expressing yourself and also the, uh, the throat chakra, you know, the, the, our throat center, mm-hmm. it's the manifestation center, you know, it's how we, all of our centers are trying to come into our throat. Mm-hmm. It also means that when you're around people, if they don't have a defined like me, they might want to speak like too much. Like they want to express themselves through you because now you're completing them. 
So what can sometimes happen is that you are feeling unheard because people around you cannot shut up. Like friends call you and she's like 20 minutes in talking about her kids and her husband and work and whatever. And, you know, and, and you're like sitting there and like, I'm happy to receive you, but you didn't ask. How am I? How is my life? So sometimes that means that you get to create a strong boundaries around you, you know, to to create that space so people don't try to just express themselves through you. Mm, Because what I'm hearing is I have what I wrote down was a defined throat. So it's a strong voice. My words are generally pretty laser sharp. Yep. And succinct. And I'm definitely, I've always been a communicator. I, I always thought that's because I was a Gemini. That's <laughs> and, um, and so sometimes, yes, around others that don't get to the point. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I think sometimes we misunderstand one another. Yes. Because they're trying to express themselves through you, through your, you know, center, because when you come around them, you activate them. Like, for example, you also have, so there are nine centers in our human design and you have four of them defined, five are open. When something is defined, it's like set. It's, um, it's, what do you have like constant access to? And then the open center are our, it's like our classrooms, that's a place that we can be conditioned. That's the place that um, we're amplifying other people's energy, but we don't have constant access to that energy. You know, so mm-hmm. there's openness. Um, and you have also, and, and I have it too, and only 35% of the population have it. No, 25, because 75 doesn't. Let's do the math, right? Right <laughs> in the morning. Um, so only 25%, you know, has a defined, and that's a defined heart or ego, you know, heart and ego. Um, you have it defined. So when people are around you, they feel unstoppable. Think Tony Robbins. He has a define. I have a define. When people are around us, they feel like I can do this. I can go there. I can achieve anything I really want because you evoke this in them, you know, that, that like I can, it's, it's a, it's the will, hmm. the will, you have the will. So you will start and you will finish something. A lot of people don't have that. So a lot of people like don't. And, and then of course we could go like very much deeper into like a channels because that's what make us so unique, you know, but just looking at your, like we mentioned it, um, your energy type, looking at your authority, looking at your strategy. When you learn to live by those three, everything else will become easier. So, okay. So there's human design type, strategy type, yeah. authority type, and energy type. I think I missed that. So there's so there is a, it's an energy type and there is authority and strategy. So and this is, there's so your, much, and there's no way we're going to get. No, no, listen, we could be sitting here like for 10 hours and we'll be still scratching surface. I told you, like I'm studying this yeah. for 40 years, but really the most important thing, it's really understanding and, and allowing yourself to land, to land with your design, to allow it. Because when you have the first reading, it just activates something in you. Mm-hmm. And it, it start, it's like planting the seed. It will start sprouting in you and you will be receptive mm-hmm. to see things differently. Yeah. So just start noticing, you know, the invitations, your type and everything. And am I being invited? Am I initiating? Am I, you know, like forcing Mm -hmm. things into the happening or am I giving myself space? Because like I mentioned, my, my spiritual wife, she's a projector profile one, three as you, because there is a six profiles. And, uh, I asked her a couple of days ago, you know, we were talking something about relationships and I'm like, why don't you ask this person? And she was like, well, it will be initiating and this person wouldn't hear me. So I just get to wait for them because Mm. if I initiate one, they won't hear me. And then there can be frustration and resentment because it wasn't their invitation. And of course it, it gets to be like big things, but. But it's hard to be patient sometimes. <laughs> I want things to go. Like there's a lot to do in this world. I'm like, come on people, let's go. You see, 
You see, it's the patient part, you know. Fascinating. It is. It really is. And we can also really like briefly look at the um, the profiles, you know, because there are six profiles, Mm -hmm. one to six, and there is like, you get a blend of like two because when it's conscious and when it's unconscious, the conscious, it's what do you know? It's, it's, it's the, it's the number that you get when you are born, the day you're born, the unconscious, it's your, um, soul, spirit, whatever you believe, right? The unconscious that comes into the body, into the baby, 88 days before the baby is born. Hmm. You know, so they say that that's when the soul enters the body, the the unconscious enters the body. Hmm. And that's unconscious. And that's how other people see you versus the conscious. It's how do you see yourself? You know, so how do you see yourself? And you know it. This is what you know about yourself. That's the one. The one is the investigator. The one is who is feeling safe in knowing things and wanting to like, like, if I ask you something, I know you're not going to answer if you really didn't research it. And if you don't know, like, I know, I know whatever I ask you, it's like, you know that you research that you study that, like, you know, your stuff. The three it's, well, they call it sometimes like the, the martyr or explorer, because the third is the one who came here into this world to experiment and experience things. So you're here for us trying what is working and what is not working so your life will be trial and error to see what is working and what is not working so you're the kind of person who and this is unconscious this is how other people see you like she's experimenting exploring you know she's um like more like adventurous, you know, my, my husband, it's also like one, three. That's why I say like three Gemini's three, one, three, you know, around <laughs> me right now, very close. So the three it's, it's really here to get their hands dirty. Let me get my hands dirty. Let me experiment with this. I want to see what is working, what is not working and really learning through the errors, you know, really mm-hmm. learning. Let's not do it this way. And yes. then you can tell people, then you can teach people, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's really like the establisher of the knowledge and truth. Yes, I can relate. I mean, my family all kind of roll their eyes and laugh at me because there goes Mariah off on some big adventure to go try something out, you know, yep. left the corporate world and quit everything and did a around the world trip and headed up international health projects and in, in the deep Nicaraguan rainforest. And um, I think it's, it's definitely um, innate to me Mm -hmm. to take leaps and try, try new things. Um, And this is so fascinating to just look back at chapters of my life in which I initiated them versus I was invited in. I think it's going to be a fascinating journal exercise to be in a place of self-reflection. Yes, because you will really be able to see and feel really the difference of what was it when I was invited and recognized versus when I was giving unsolicited advice or I initiated something, you know, Mm -hmm. the energy and the results will be different. It doesn't mean that it's like the world will end or it's like terrible thing to do, but the results and how it lands is different. Mm -hmm. Like there can be a deeper impact when you are invited to the things and you will feel so much different when you, for example, see an event, I'm like, Oh, they need the midwife there. Let me, let me message them to be a speaker there. Right. Then you have to like go and and like probing yourself and blah, blah, blah. But when you are invited because they saw you, you are like, wow, Totally. It's like dream come true. It's totally. different. And it doesn't right. mean you have to be sitting on your booty. It's it's through your research and learning and books and, and, you know, like trying and exploring things that people will see you and the right people will recognize you. Mm-hmm. You know, like when you're aligned with your design, you will be at the right time with the right people with the right opportunities and, mm-hmm. and you will expand exponentially. Yeah, I love it. that feels so true. I mean, even I think about um, when I talk with the marketing team in regard to the work that I do, it really does not come naturally for me 
to try to say, here's who I am and here's what I do. Um, or to try to like do podcast pitches or thinking about like PR and publicity to go out there and say, Hey, it, it just, it feels misaligned. Yeah. Versus when I'm invited to join things, it's always a yes. Like, yeah, that's so exciting. I would love to. Yeah. And it almost doesn't even matter what it is. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's do it. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 I think it will be really fun for you to really reflect on it and, and mm-hmm. see that, you know, because again, like human design goes in such a depth and there is just so much, you know, so even when I'm doing just complete foundation with my clients, we usually do four or five, you know, sessions. And this is a little bit different because if it's just you and me sitting and we are not sharing it with the world, uh, you know, it, it would be just a little bit less converse conversational you know Mm -hmm. because like this it's it's really a flowing conversation when it's me like teaching it's a little bit more information that I can like share you know but Mm. this way we are like sharing about the other profiles too and other designs too you know so um I feel like human design once you open the door you cannot like not go through and not see that and it's it's funny because then you're like well what is my husband what are my kids and you start to see a family dynamics and understanding you know like my uh, spiritual wife she has two kids two boys one it's projector like her and you and one it's manifesting generator you know and it's such a different energy and different dynamics for those two boys like projector should go to the bed before they're exhausted before they're tired because then it's like too late for you to have a full restful night but for example manifesting generator and, uh, and generator we gotta be like exhausted like we gotta like completely like burn out our batteries and go to bed like exhausted so we can sleep soundly and also projectors um they very 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 benefit from sleeping alone you know i I have friends or clients that like sleep without their husbands you know like for two or three nights a week because that's how they rejuvenate because you observe all the energy you know and and you know in human design like um the, the like the founder of it, Rahu, um, he says that each type really benefits from being alone because we are in each other aras all the time. You're in people's aras and you're going to get influenced by their centers, by their channels, by their aura, you know. So giving yourself that space to be alone, it's beautiful and especially in a nature, so soothing, so rejuvenating, you know, so creating those spaces for you to rest and then knowing that when you come to people, you will be recognized by the mm-hmm. right people. Mm-hmm. So what do you feel for you? It's like the most valuable or exciting to know about this, about yourself. Well, um, I think there's a couple of things. One is I feel validated in regard to, um, my intuition and and how much I feel people. And I really do often feel like I can be a guide Mm -hmm. and, and it won't land unless I'm invited. And that feels like, so just like, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, and so often, you know, I can be at a party or in a space and I just, I just have a knowing of what is going on with someone or what they need. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to share that unless it's asked and that feels very validating. And then this piece around being invited, it is interesting to look back at my life in times where I was white knuckling it, so to speak, maybe being a little bit too much in a masculine model of the feeling like I needed to be the generator to instigate and start the thing potentially because I didn't have the patience to wait to be invited. Or the the other thing that I just am curious about is this idea of the martyr and the explorer. I think sometimes because I'm always, you know, like we just got back from a seven week trip with the family and we were in three different time zones and all over. And then we come back and I'm like, okay, why aren't we being invited to stuff? And it's like, well, we've been gone, you know? And so there's also, I can feel that dichotomy Mm -hmm. of, 
um, allowing myself to be more patient with being invited because often I'm off exploring and maybe people want to invite me into something, but there's also like, how do they know when I'm available? And I think sometimes I hear from others that I make them feel as though I'm not available because Mm -hmm. I keep myself very busy and I have three children and I'm running a successful business and, and we have lots of adventures. So that's just kind of me churning in my self-reflection. And I'm curious if you have any thoughts there. No, I, I feel like you were meant to be an explorer, you know, and people who are your people will, they will try, they will come to you. They will say like, Hey, Mariah, I would love to have you as a speaker. I would love to publish a book with you. You know, it's, it's just like the right people just get to ask, even if, you know, like my grandma always says the answer, the, what's the worst, like the answer can be no. Right. But at least, you know, so mm-hmm. I feel like that. And, and also just, I feel like people knowing what are your like passions, you know, like then they will know what they can invite you to. Mm -hmm. So it's just like really just like sharing, you know, sharing your adventures when it feels good. Um, Women's circles, Yoni, Yoni steams. (laughs) Yeah. Going to get a massage. Yeah. Um, Definitely like, Oh my gosh. When I'm invited, you know, and then I go, huh, how fascinating. I started women's circles for 10 years because I, I, of course I would love to be invited to a women's circle, but I wonder if maybe I was just not patient enough. Hmm. Also, did anyone ever ask you about like a woman's circles or was it like completely your idea from your head and, and you just started it? Or were there women around you that you're like, wow, like this would really benefit them? Like they were asking you like, hey, have you ever, you know, done yeah. a, a circle or, you know, it's it, it doesn't have to be like. Um, sometimes, you know, with the projectors and the invitation, it can be a little bit confusing because they're like, I don't want to be sitting here and like do nothing. You know, it's, it's really like entertaining yourself with exploring, right? It's not doing nothing, but it's also like being invited, like, oh, like I would love to be like attending, you know, like a circles or I think like circles are amazing and we don't have any here in town or, you know, yeah. there are no virtual. So you can see that as an invitation because you're already recognized, right. By working with women. So it can be a little delicate, you know? Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. So in that scenario, yes, there was the invitation. Yes. And then I tend to be the person that can put it together and make it happen and Mm -hmm. get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessarily, I mean, I know there's no black and white here, but once the invitation has happened, then it's almost like we can play different hats. I can become the generator and get the ball rolling and make things happen as long as- You will never be a generator. You will never be a manifester. You cannot change the hats. You can be born a a projector. What happens is when you're around other people, you will get influenced by them. So if you're with me, you can have more energy, you know, and then you will be influenced by my channels and my centers. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can be influenced, you are never going to change who you are. You are mm-hmm. projector. You're meant to be projector. You're meant to be invited. So there is like with human design, there is no path like changing. Like in the morning, I'm projector. In the afternoon, I'm manifester because I will go and initiate. It doesn't change this way. You will be influenced by people you're around, the energies you're around, but um, there's really no hat changing, you know? So, so fascinating. <laughs> I want to learn more. I know. I know. It's it's really, really beautiful. I also believe I have like a PDF from my uh, past mentor, like about projector. So I will send it to you so you can like, you know, sit with that and read because I know that now you're like, okay, I want to learn more and I want to investigate more and I want to research more. So I will find it and I'll send that to you so you can read that. And, you know, like um, human design, it's experiment. You're here to experiment it. It's not, like you said, it's not black and white. You get to experiment it. Your human design experiment will be different from anyone else human design experiment. So play with it. Like we came here to play and explore. So play with it and let me know how it feels, how it goes and, and you know, how it's unfolding for you. And 
I think that um, there will be a lot of projectors and other designs who are listening to this, who are going to be curious and really like spark, you know, their interest. So they can always look, like I said, on free human design chart. Like I use the jovianarchive.com because it's free. And then, you know, you can always get your reading. I do readings. I don't offer them anywhere because it's just, if I do readings for me, that's like paying it forward because I love doing that. But it's not like foundation cornerstone of what I'm doing. It's just a little one of the modalities that I'm using in my business. Because anyone who comes into my life, I want to know. Because if you are a reflector, I will treat you differently than projector. And it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, being fake. But it's because I'm being real respectful of what do you need and and how you're going to feel seen and heard and and respect that you know so mm-hmm. you know with uh you projector i will do open ended question with manifester i will just inform them with my husband manifesting generator i will ask him yes and no questions and then i will wait for him to ride the emotional wave to see where he is at and when he will like arrive when it feels right you know so it's it's beautiful mariah and i feel like we just planted a seed and, and keep yeah. people see what else it's unfolding for you. It's it's so fascinating. And of course, I'm thinking, oh, I want to bring you into the group, into my master mm-hmm. class, um, into my mastermind, my group program. I think it'd be so lovely to have you come in and have this conversation with all the women. I think it yeah. would add a lot of value. Yeah. And of course, I'm, there's a part of me that's bummed that our first episode ended up getting deleted, yeah. but I also trust that it's divine. So with a couple minutes left, oh, it's 11, 11. Yeah. Um, I wondering if you want to just say in a little bit about who you are in the world. I mean, obviously this was going to be my personal session to have a human design read. And I'm like, all right, I'll just put my stuff out in the world and here we go. But for those that are listening, do you want to say it all about what it is that you do mm. and how they reach out to you um, if they want to lean in? Thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation. Yes, I would love to share. <laughs> um, so I'm an alignment coach for women. I work exclusively with women. Um, and alignment coach for me, it means that I um, I support women to align with their purpose, to be uh, living in their purpose, who they really came here to be and to live abundantly, you know, really unapologetically abundantly. I do it through my one-on-one mentorship. We just finished Soulful Success Experience Online, published our book, which became Amazon bestseller. So I'm really thankful for that. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. And um, doing retreats and masterminds, you know, I personally absolutely thrive and love doing one-on-one because again in human design I'm a single definition I love one-on-one your split definition you're better with groups and people around you so it's also fun to know that Mm -hmm. uh, because as a split definition like other people's energies like fulfill you I'm like I'm good I'm good by myself I don't need to go anywhere (laughs) I'm like happy so um, to connect with me I feel like the best place really it's Instagram that's you know where I am or my website Petya Kolebova and Mariah will write it down for you because nobody can spell my name <laughs> so those are like two places because on my website you can find everything you can find what events we're hosting my instagram my podcast unapologetically abundant um that's where i am and that's where i'm going awesome and the landscapers just started outside so with that Perfect timing. i am um, <laughs> I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for this time. I'm also grateful for all of the interactions that we've had and how um, just divine they've been from that first moment that I was attracted to your dog at the airport in Puerto Rico and then the VIP lounge at that event and, um, and how fascinating that even when you were in a uh, time of transition for yourself, I offered my phone number and you used it and, and you invited me in. Yeah. And so thank you for inviting me in and letting me, giving me the opportunity to be there to hold space for you. Um, It was, it's so nourishing to be able to be invited and really be in my power and hold space for individuals in the way that I know that I'm destined to. So thank you. 
for the people who recognize you. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you mm-hmm. for having me. Thank you for letting me share my gifts. And uh, thank you for the way you are showing up in the world. It really mm-hmm. makes a difference. So thank you. All right. What a great podcast, huh? I, as you can tell, I'm an open book. And hopefully this is, as you've listened, it's helped you learn a little bit more about human design. Um, more about some of the different human design, human design types. And it sounds like the depth of human design readings and all the ways in which we can learn more about ourselves. And you got to get to know me a little bit more. And so hopefully if you are a leader out there, if you have a podcast, if you're launching a book, if you're planning a women's circle or a party or a retreat and you feel called and know that, um, my gifts are needed in that space. It sounds like I would love an invitation. And so I invite you to invite me (laughs) if you are called and look forward to interacting. Um, Also, if you are a client of mine, thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, express my gifts and listen into my intuition and guide. And if you are someone who is not yet in my infrastructure, but would like to invite me to offer up um, my gifts as a women's health provider, as a holder of vibrancy, as a holder of passion, as a holder and midwife um, that holds the container for women as they navigate through chapters of change, you are welcome to register for the next Vibrant Life Workshop. You are welcome to book a call with someone from my team and they will help navigate when is the best time to introduce you to me and um, and be part of that invitation journey. So you are welcome to come into my infrastructure so that I'm given the opportunity to be invited to help you along your journey of moving from exhausted to energized, balancing your hormones and feeling turned on by your life, your lover and yourself. What a fun episode. This one was very different. And with that, until next time, thanks for being a part of it and a big cheers to your version of your vibrant life. Thank you for listening to the Woman's Vibrancy Code. Connect with us and take the first step to transforming your energy, hormones, and libido at thewomansvibrancycode.com. Cheers to your zest and vitality. Make sure to follow for weekly power-packed value.